doing the first Geekdom Movies road trip. Woo! We got snacks. So yeah. many snacks. We got so many snacks. Like, like so many snacks. <laughs> we have snacks, and we could stay out here for a month, and we would be fine. We could survive in the wilderness of Ohio. Yeah, in the cornfields. <laughs> Yeah. Soy I'm driving, we're almost there. Um, so Tenet did not open in good old Michigan. Uh, so we are making a run for the hills for uh, Ohio. Toledo. More like a run for the flatlands. <laughs> There's no hills out here. <laughs> run for the, yeah. The cornfields. Yeah, cornfields. Cause it a lot is of cornfields. A lot of construction, a lot of cornfields. But yeah, they, what? This is our first like big like road trip. It's exciting. Uh, movies are legal here. Hashtag movies are legal. <laughs> movie theaters wish... are open in Ohio, so we are trekking out here, and we're gonna go see Tenet. What, what? We're super excited. So look out for a review at the end. drove all the way from the Great Lakes state of Michigan one whole hour and 10 minutes all the way to a another state Ohio just to see Tenet for you guys well, and, well Fahad might have done it for himself but we did it for you guys George and I <laughs> no George did it for himself too he's, he's like, well, I mean, he's this it. one yeah. yeah I never would have driven to Ohio to see this but um I did for, for the audience, for the viewers. So make it. sure you hit that subscribe button. We just hit 500 subscribers. 527. And 527? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. 527. Welcome, new subscribers. So thank you. We appreciate you. We're going to jump into our review of Tenant. And George is going to start us off because Fahad and I are are rather confused on some of the events that actually took place in this movie. If you know anything about the director, Christopher Nolan, he has directed The Prestige, Interstellar, uh, Inception. and Inception, yeah. Memento. Which, all of which are movies that require three to five viewings just to so begin to understand what's going on. But right. that being said, they're all worth the effort. So this was our first cursory viewing it was a little hard to understand some of the dialogue. I think we had some audio issues, but George seemed to be the one that picked up on the most of it. So, without any spoilers, George, take it away. All right. So this movie is definitely worth your time watching. I would have to say it was more in depth than Inception. It was more in depth than Prestige. I mean, like this this movie is like at a totally other level of just wow. Yeah. Like serious, seriously, a lot of thought that is required to watch this movie. It's great. I love it. I love it. So, um, without spoilers, uh, this movie was, you know, gosh, what can I say about it? That would I don't be a know. Spoiler? It's a review. <laughs> it would, it's, it's difficult not to spoil this because there's so much, there's so much, and so much of it is tied into other events in this. Let me just say the effects in this movie, outstanding, outstanding. Like this does not, it really doesn't look fake. I mean, no, like you, 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 you could well, believe that like this stuff is kind did, of happening. Some you did know? look fake, but I know what you mean. It looked very like good, realistic special effects. Right? Yeah. And the way, the way, um, things are done in it, it's not, it's not like what you would normally expect from some other movies right. that have done like somewhat similar things. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and in that regard, like it's, it's a lot more streamlined. It's, it's not, it's not as hard to believe as other films, which of course that, is, but okay. Well, I, I, I don't know. I thought it was really pretty scientifically based. Um, it might be, I mean, I don't know. A lot to, of to an extent, of course. <laughs> But, I mean, um, Interstellar was too. I Interstellar they, was yeah, more yeah. scientific. Yeah. So maybe you're, you might be right. You never know. In, in certain aspects of it, at least. Um, but yeah, it was it was really good. Um, the acting was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And Robert Patterson, oh, or Pattinson, Robert Pattinson. Oh my gosh! Wow, I like his role in it is great. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love. Uh, Denzel Washington's son, he does an amazing job in this. 
and man, that guy can run. Some of the action <laughs> oh, scenes, yeah. some of the action scenes in this, I mean, like, he's, he's fully decked out in gear yeah. and just booking it. And like, you can see him just pumping. I mean, like that, that guy can run. So <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm trying to think of what, what are some of the other things that were absolutely great about it. I, I really like the scores they used in it. The music was really good. And yeah, the credit, Background music, the credit really music. I gotta get that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the bass was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was. There was, um, let's see. Yeah. You guys have any uh, thoughts on anything okay, before we go into spoilers? If you're done, just give it your yeah, final score. Um, watch go to it. theaters. But go to the theaters. Popcorn. Go to theaters. Wear that mask. It's worth it. I don't care why. It's worth it. Watch hey, they're movie. wearing masks in the movie, too. So. Yeah? Because you remember the oxygen mask? Oh, yeah. They were wearing masks. <laughs> no spoilers. <in> the <laughs> That's not a spoiler. It's a it's mask. It's in the trailer, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, why is a okay. mask a spoiler? Um, so, yeah. A golden popcorn, then, for you? Oh, definitely, definitely. Like, if you if you liked Inception, you'll there's I think there's a decent possibility you like this movie even more. But you might have to watch it a few times because <laughs> yeah. there's a lot to take in, a lot to take in on this. Yeah, um, I would say the most surprising thing about this movie is Kenneth Branagh is a villain in this movie. He does the voice of one of the guys in um, the animated movie we saw with the like the natives in South America and the city of gold. I'm trying to remember. The City of Gold movie, the animated movie we saw. El Dorado. Yeah, he's a he does the oh, voice no. of one of the guys, the main guys uh, in El Dorado, who falls in love with the native girl and wants to stay. Oh, that's Kenneth um, Branagh. Wow. Kenneth Branagh also wrote and directed Cinderella. <laughs> the live action. The live action. Yep, and he's the villain in this movie, which is wow. really funny because the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, wow, this guy is like the most family friendly. Disney guy you can ever meet. He also wrote and directed Thor 1. He's he not did, family uh, friendly here. No. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he did. He wrote and directed Artemis Fowl. That's the only one he messed up on, I think. Really? The other Disney movies were good. He's he should have taken some notes from Christopher Nolan on that. I, I guess so. Been. Been, that would have been great. He could have done a good movie. Like, out of that. Yeah, because it's weird because he wrote and directed Road to El Dorado. That was his first movie. That was amazing. He also did Cinderella, which was if live actions go, like the live action Cinderella is like 10 out of 10 perfect. Oh, yeah. There's no way to improve that movie. Really? It's, have you seen the live action Cinderella? It's really good. It is really super good. How did you? Okay. Um, that's a whole other discussion that I don't yeah, know if you go to. But Cinderella was fantastic. And even Thor 1 was very magical. It felt like a Disney movie because of all the stuff that happens in Thor 1 with the, you know, the city in the sky and the rainbow bridge. I mean, he's he's definitely way better as a writer director, but he's as a villain is like he's unrecognizable. I mean, he looks the same, but his the way he presents himself as the villain is really cool. Like, it's very shocking to see him as a villain. Um, the other thing I was gonna say uh, was, oh yeah, so this movie for me, um, everyone who complains about Hollywood make an original movie, Hollywood do this, well. You just got go your first original yeah. movie in a very long time. Uh -huh. Like, go see it. If you mm -hmm. want yeah. Hollywood to stop making remakes, reboots, sequels, uh, copying books into movies, whatever, like, you gotta go see this movie because yeah. this movie is nothing like I've ever seen. No. Like, no, like, this is this is like Inception style. Yeah. Like, out there, absolutely awesome. Stuff you've kind never of thought of. Never yeah. Heard of, yeah. Like the the special Take paradoxes effects. to a new level. I mean, a lot of it, and, and the other thing I have to say is, I'm really impressed that the trailers didn't give anything away. Yeah, like I that had is impressive. no clue Extremely what impressive. I was walking into. I just knew it was called Tenet. Christopher Nolan wrote and directed it. Denzel Washington, Twilight Batman's in it. Um, and that was literally it. Oh yeah, and like, and it was a sci-fi movie. Like, and it could be a sequel to Inception. Some people were thinking it is not a sequel to Inception, no. but. I can see the similarities in this movie where it, it looked like it could be a Inception sequel, but you know, I'm glad it's not because it has its own yeah. structure and story and it is really good. And you do talk about it because I think like Shen and I and George, when we were just, we were like so hungry, we were literally eating our Chipotle that we got leftover and just talking about what this scene meant and 
where the story was going and what what does that mean and what did that like we were yeah, just yeah we've been talking for the last two hours trying to go chronologically through the movie and, and figure uh, out what you, happened like the events yeah and i feel and like we each picked up about a third of it <laughs> and kind of came together <laughs> and still are a little confused I'm yeah sorry. it's <laughs> yeah like i would say i would 100 percent watch this movie again just to pick up everything like i did prestige and inception and interstellar that's that's how you have to watch christopher nolan movies pretty much yeah, yeah. um this is above I, th I think for me um his lowest movies are memento and uh oh, I like memento. dunkirk there were just the two movies that i didn't really like he that much dunkirk? Yeah, yeah he wrote and directed dunkirk. that one's so straightforward there's no like, i just didn't like it it just, yeah. it just didn't work it's, for me i haven't seen it it's, um it was like him attempting drama <laughs> Well, he's done like, drama. That's not yeah, like, but that was, that was drama. Like, I don't feel like that was as much drama. I mean, it was drama, but okay. it wasn't. Like, the like, whole time, Dunkirk, Matthew McConaughey oh, is just extremely. crying about his daughter the whole time. Like, getting back home. Interstellar? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so much more to it than that. No, I know. I'm just saying there yeah. was <laughs> drama. In, there, drama oh, was yeah. the most... Even The Dark Knight is super drama, like, with all these characters, oh, yeah. even though it's an action movie. I personally think it's as good, if not better... Like Inception, Interstellar, Prestige are just kind of like, like in the same line. There's mm -hmm. no worst or best. Yeah. I would just put them in the same league as this. It's, you know, all those movies are messing with time, messing with your reality. They're just very wasn't... surreal. They're all very surreal. Yes, like mm -hmm. you're trying to question everything and what is actually happening and where the story is going. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times they take you in for a loop and just kind of show you something that you thought you knew, but then later on it looks completely different. Interstellar did that. Inception did that shoot like so like he he's memento prestige prestige with hugh jackman and his crazy ending like i do feel like this movie is just kind of nicely packaged being different but can easily go with those type of movies where you watch more and you learn more so for me like even though i didn't fully grasp everything in the movie i know enough to know that i i can watch it and it's a smart movie and i'll pick up things that i didn't pick up the first time if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. It's not going to get worse. It's just going to get better, I feel like. Yep. So that's my review. 10 out of 10 Golden Popcorn. Favorite score, your final score? Golden Popcorn. Go see it. Big, oh. Mac, big IMAX. All right. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. And it's worth a sit in the theater. <laughs> so, there was a study done a few years ago on spoilers. And they had a bunch of college kids. They split them into two groups. And they spoiled the book for one group. And they didn't spoil the book for the other group. Okay. They had them read the book. Okay. And they found, scientifically, you actually enjoy things more when it's spoiled for you. <laughs> I can see that. It's a little weird. So, I was thinking I mean, about that during this entire movie. Yeah. Because this entire movie, I was like, I wish somebody would just tell me what the hell is happening. Well, they I did. I am so confused. <laughs> we just couldn't follow This is it a along. lot of work. Yeah. This is a lot of, like, mental gymnastics that I'm having to do here. I am super confused, and I'm trying to keep track of all these events. I go to the movies to have fun and escape. I don't go to the movies to, like, make me do mental math and homework. It is too much. Now, I do like Christopher Nolan for his mind-bending, weird, crazy things that are thought-provoking. I love that. But don't make me, like have to do the extra step of putting it all together to even get to what the movie is trying to even say to then get to the thought-provoking stuff like that is too much for me so i would love to go through and read a plot synopsis that has all the details of who is who and what is what and then watch this movie again and i think i would really enjoy it because it is a good well-filmed movie it has a good soundtrack it has interesting characters but I have no clue what happened to it. <laughs> but I, I have no clue. And George, George and Fahad have been explaining it. And, I have not. And I've been contributing <laughs> the pieces that I yeah. that I picked up on for over an hour now. And I still don't understand it. So it's definitely not a one and done movie. This is one no, you're going to have to no. watch several yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. But I think I'm okay with that because it's Christopher Nolan. Yeah. I know that he's smart. He's not yeah. wasting your time. I was so confused the first time I saw Interstellar, like I was saying earlier when we were talking. I and understood then, Interstellar the first time I watched it. That's weird because I did not. <laughs> because Interstellar is based in reality. I well, understood the, this was too. I understood yeah. the science that they were like. I've I've studied Einstein's theory of relativity. I've studied science. I understand if you go to a different planet and you come back, you are a few seconds younger or older. Like that is all real, and I kind of understood. So I wasn't completely lost. This one, this isn't based in real science. 
because time travel isn't real that we know of. Well, Matthew McConaughey also did time travel, remember? And it's it wasn't like back to the future time travel where you're like, it's the 80s and now it's the 50s. The movie does deal with some aspects of time travel. I mean, you saw it in the movie, time was going inward and backwards, even with the action scenes and like catching the bullet. Well, that's true. There's, there's time. Trailer. Time is being weird. <laughs> so, yeah. it's a, you know, um, it, um, it, it, Inception played with the concept of dreams, and this plays with the concept of time. And Interstellar played with the concept of like space and time, but but I understood what space and time is because I've studied those real scientific things. This one it feels like you're gonna this have to is really new learn. territory yeah. where it's all like made up science fiction that you you can't go and read it in a book because it's all in his head. Well, it's paradoxes. Yeah. So it's like the it's grandfather par paradox is a scientific method of. Uh, there's a scene in the movie, and it's not a spoiler but if it's you've a ever theory. seen it. It's like if you kill your grandfather. Are you still alive, or do you die because you killed your? But that's it's a, a paradox. That's an unproven theory. Whereas we can actually send a clock to space and bring it back and measure that's, the time difference. I've done that. I, I, yeah, that. I mean, in a way, that makes sense. But even the black hole in Interstellar, and Matthew McConaughey choosing I mean, to go. I mean, that is an exaggeration of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's in science fiction, fiction yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And this movie is doing the same exact thing. Yeah. It's messing with time in a way. It's it's very it's fiction. Very it's not scientific. It messes with point. time in a completely different way than Interstellar does. Right, right. So my final score: If you like Christopher Nolan, if you like to work hard and you like to think, this movie is definitely for you. If you just go to the movies to have a good time, you're not going to enjoy this movie. That's not true. I think you will still have a very good time. The action is. There's a lot of action. The action is great. The story is. So like, I, I, I was rooting for that girl the whole time, and I was like, oh my god, this guy is crazy. I'm not into <laughs> action, so the action's not my thing. So if you're if you're going for the action, you're probably gonna love it because the action's very good. If you're just if you're not into action, this probably isn't for you. <laughs> if you're not into action or movies that really make you hard, think hard, this probably isn't for you. But if you like thinking hard and you like action, go see this movie. For okay, if you sure. don't, then go watch. Uh, Bambi. Uh, I, was, I was no. <laughs> yeah. So we're going right into the spoiler section. This is the part. If you don't like spoilers and don't want to be spoiled, turn it off See and come ya. back. Come back later. Yeah. Or if you don't care, be spoiled. If you're free, like me then... and this is the kind of movie that makes no sense, so you would like it spoiled, continue. Yeah. Um. And so the hardest part for me, understanding is the bad guy, how he got the device, what he's doing with the device and how it plays into this end of the world scenario because the girl in the beginning of the movie says why well, are you are you trying to stop a nuclear like explosion That's it's like no when she says no much worse and what she means by much worse is like if the bad guy does something with time and does it in a certain way it will destroy not only earth but, but the entire universe what it was that i think they did i just didn't understand it <laughs> it's it's essentially like a almost like a mix between antimatter and um the grandfather paradox i think it's right. essentially what he's trying to do so basically in this if something ends up with this particular algorithm going backwards in time then it essentially turns into antimatter in the fact that like if it meets itself then hmm. essentially there's there's going to be trouble okay so it would, it would it would almost be like or that somehow the way uh get in the screen more because your head keeps getting cut off the way robert patterson explains it in the movie he says that like time basically time is a stream right right so the objects that are going forward in time that's that's like how things normally are okay. right well if you end up with too many objects going the other direction then everything kind of deletes itself. Okay. Because it starts to unexist. Right. So, so basically, with that in mind, I guess uh, essentially the problem is is that if, like, let's say if people start going backwards in time, then they stop existing. Once you reach a certain point. Right. Because it's almost like you're getting younger, and then well, you didn't exist at a certain point. So. So you can only go back in time where you exist. So that's why the scientist who made this whatever weapon or figured out the Ooh, formula can you go back in time before you exist. Well, it sounds like she she couldn't. The original scientist, I guess she committed suicide or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. She sent it back in time. She found a way to send it to the past. 
But yeah. she didn't herself send it to the past. She found a way to just send it to the past. And she buried it somehow in this nuclear reactor in Russia where they find the weapon, who's this guy who's basically finds this time capsule, right? Yeah. And he he's willing to do it because he thinks he can... Either he's willing to die to find this thing or he's going to find something that's worth something. She should have buried it in the future because then fewer people would have had a chance to find it. I don't think you can, though. You can't go to the future. That's the problem. You can only go into the past. That's what the movie set up. What? You can they only... the future a bunch. No. The bad guy did. No, no, no. That's not the future, though. Did that's they your future. The future a whole bunch? You can't, you can go to the past. You can't mm. jump from the point of where you are in the future. So I can't send it to my 60 year old, but I can send this to my 20 year old. Yeah. And I can go up to they anything can't go my. They can into the future? No. no See no, how, no, what no, I mean? No. This movie is so confusing. Well, this, I but they said like that in the three beginning. Three hours and I was sure that they were going into the future. Well, that's, that's what he says. Like, remember when she got shot? And he was like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to go into time. I'm going to go back. So he goes into the other room where it's red and he goes, but he only goes to his own past mm -hmm. to stop it. He can't jump ahead like a million years or a thousand years or a hundred years. No, he can yeah, only do it. Time travel is limited. Yeah. It's limited to the past and certain level of past. And because the formula breaks down after a certain point. So she can't pa send it to like, you know, she can't send this, whatever this is to like the time of the dinosaurs or like a million years ago or whatever. It has to be like in a small window of time, which the science lady in the beginning of the movie where he talks to her and she talks about, remember she said, pick up the gun. Mm -hmm. She says there's only a limited amount of time you can send something and get something. So that object can fluctuate now between time. That's why he doesn't have to be back in time. He can just fluctuate the formula to pick up the gun and shoot the gun without loading it or putting a gun in there but he can't do it I guess he can so they they've been sending guns bullets things through this thing not a person because it's too dangerous and when he did it in the movie um, Denzel Washington's son it's something that you're not supposed to attempt to do but she but because of the risk of what can happen if they don't get the whatever this device is and he had to try it. And he knew that he might be going to his death sentence. He knew that he can't breathe because oxygen is now different. So he has to have this mask. There was a lot of barriers. Like what happens if I touch myself? What happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? They're kind of like, these are all theories. We don't know. You could literally like annihilate the world if you touch yourself. So mm -hmm. he did find himself. He did literally physically touch himself and the world didn't annihilate. Yeah, but, but the had, question he is, he he, he wasn't actually, on. yeah, it wasn't skin on skin. Mm -hmm. he had like a so he technically armor. wasn't touching himself. He was, and that's, I think, I think that's part of the reason why, like, nothing ended up happening yeah. was because he didn't actually touch himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, when he, when that other guy grabbed his helmet off, you know, that wasn't actually him. So he wasn't interacting with himself that was someone else because mm -hmm. essentially i think i think basically like if you <laughs> i don't know it starts to get complicated at that point <laughs> but it would it would sort of like from what they were saying it sounds like it would essentially have the same effect as antimatter where basically boom. explosion boom right yeah i mean like you can't have molecules atoms matter touch itself in the past because that's that's something, it's how you split the atom and cause a nuclear bomb, right? You you literally cannot take the same atoms, take them in the past and bring them to the same atoms near you. So like if George is here and near George comes and he hugs this George and those atoms touch and, those ma and the matter and the molecules, atoms, whatever you want to call it, when they clash, they will you will cause the George explosion. Mm -hmm. And that explosion could annihilate the entire universe, it could annihilate maybe a city, maybe the planet Earth, maybe just all of North America, half the planet. We don't know. None of us know. It's all theory. When he, so, was, when he was in that car and it flipped. Right. And then he woke up saved with the two, with Robert Because Pattinson. Robert Pattinson, right. Wait, how did Robert Pattinson save him? Because it's the, the, not the, not his Robert Pattinson, it's the... No, 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 it is the, because they it both went back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they both end up going back. Yeah, it's so not just So essentially, him. like, They he took ends the up... girl who was dying, mm -hmm. and they took the, they took Robert Pattinson, 
but they didn't go along with Denzel Washington. They just kind of like hauled back. Like they kind of stayed. He kind of stayed with her while Denzel oh, Washington. So they grabbed him, and then what did they do? Find the. So they found. Yeah, they found him, and they knew where the car was gonna flip, and they figured out that's where the car flips. Oh. So what Robert Pattinson does is he drives up to him, grabs him, and then puts him in the back seat and says wow i've never seen anybody get hypothermia from an explosion before that's new <laughs> and that's him saying basically like did they time travel like again instead after of that? burning explosion him, or burning it it's the opposite yeah, yeah it kind of reversed the effect. so it didn't explode it became the opposite of an explosion so instead of really hot he yeah, became really cold. really cold and he had hypothermia i got that part but did they time travel again did they didn't have to get back to the airport to time nope. travel again? then they kept no because he, the he had his mask on and then so. there was a duplicate of them yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. They were fighting each other. Everything they were doing was basically the beginning of that half of the movie, including like the boat scene. But I understood that part, yeah. So all of that, everything that took place all the way up to the end is basically the past. Right? Mm -hmm. Including the base where the bomb is. Unless so they, they jumped just up. Continues Unless, repeating. Well, I think, well, no, because then time catches up and they catch up to the time that they left and now time is moving forward. But they're How not. How do they catch up to the time that they left? They just. They just kept moving they, forward. They, yeah, they they progressed it forward again, and then they kept rewinding. They literally just How kept they sleeping. Get rid of the they, that's why they well they kept sleeping in the car, over and over again. So you saw him sleep. What is that? No, not in the somewhere. car. They it wasn't in the car. No, they had where essentially. So they were traveling. They ended up spending a long time traveling back in time because if you end up noticing, yeah, at the at the very start, right? There's there's those boats. Yeah. By the windmills right. that are out on the water. Right. Okay. He ends up traveling back to that point. Okay. So almost back to the point where he was at the opera, which is at the very start. Okay. So essentially what ends up happening is like every time they do a travel, that's like another, almost like another existence of them, which because of that ends up, it makes things more complicated. So they have a bunch of duplicates running around? Kind of. Kind of. But it's actually still them because... Is just like in a different time, like it's the inverse version in the like the okay, regular so version. In Back to the Future, there's a duplicate of them, and then they time travel back to where they started from, and now which technically wouldn't fine be possible. Again. But in this movie's in fact, context, yeah. In this okay, so in this movie's context, essentially what ends up happening is so that they have more time to create a plan to go up against this guy. They end up starting from the point where she was injured. Right. That's that's when they start going backwards in time. Well, she's injured. Then they only go to the point where the bomb was stolen, where he gave it to her, right? Or gave mm -hmm. it to him, the bad guy. Remember no, the no, base? it's still going backwards. It's still going backwards. So okay, they, it's still going backwards because so now they're going all the way to the once plane they scene. invert. Do they only do the go backwards and it can't go forwards? No. So. So basically what ends up happening is that that machine can go either way, right? If you step in one Back side, forward. goes one way. You step in the other side, it goes the other way. Right. So so essentially they go from the one side of the your, machine. Your head is getting cut off. Sorry. So they go, <laughs> they go from that. the... <laughs> so they go from the one side of the machine to the other side of the machine. Right. All right. And that means they're traveling in verse. Right. Through time. Okay. Right. So... All the physics are weird and everything. You know, you see that whole situation with the car and all that. Okay. They're still traveling backwards. He manages to get that mask on. Okay. Just in time. Okay. The car ends up freezing because physics are weird. And weird. Stuff and, yeah, right. Because he set fire backwards. Who <laughs> knows how that works? <laughs> well, let's just, sure. Let's give yeah, it the, so, the, the, the story for the movie. For so, the yeah. So, so then from that point onward, they're still traveling back, which is why everything in that one ship that they're on is like is like taped the windmill off. going backwards yeah it's okay. all taped off right they have where you know he's he's wearing the mask while he's outside doing pull-ups like that's it's still going backwards through that point but okay. that ship is in that one scene where he gets dropped off by the cia agent there to to end up um basically figuring out what's going on with these inverse bullets and weapons and such and um, so essentially he ends up fast forward to uh, the the last scene that's when he finds out that he ends up being the one that sets up everything in the first in place the, in which is what he tells the Indian woman 
is that I'm the one yeah, who you work you were for. for me the yeah, time. because time has been. Did he shoot her at the end of the movie? He did. Yeah, yeah he did because Why? she was gonna shoot him. Wasn't she the good guy? No, she wasn't. She I, wasn't she bad or good. She was just. She was trying to tie you guys up loose see what ends. I mean? This movie's way too much well, work. Well, okay, look. It's they're way both. Too much work. The problem is they're all trying to cover up loose ends. So she thinks she's I'm hired. Gonna have to think about a movie for no, no. We're gonna we're gonna, gonna we're gonna close this up. The bomb needs to be found. <laughs> the bomb needs to be turned off. Get the weapon. They get the weapon. They split all three of them at different mm -hmm. points. The lady who he thinks he's working for, who's working from somebody oh. in the future, is not the future person. Oh my gosh. It's Denzel Washington's son. Wait, That's what? why. Yes. No. What? What? I just okay. So Do it quickly. The reason why time. the re the reason why that they couldn't have that thing go up blow up in the explosion was because that was a nuclear explosion, right? Yeah. Or underground something, yeah. Something. Nuclear, yeah. Somehow that would then end up since that was since i believe the um explosion well not the explosion but basically that that the algorithm the algorithm Wouldn't, was traveling in verse right so a nuclear weapon going backwards in time would is that what you're somehow saying? somehow basically i think that would end up with inverse and reverse right yeah, yeah like so basically password nuclear weapon going. with because I think essentially he was dropping it into the machine that right, was right. going forward and I knew backward. I that part, yeah. See, that's the part I was missing. Oh, okay. Was, was that essentially if, if he blew that up inside the machine that makes it go one way or the other. It can cause the end of the universe. It would basically cause the end of the universe. Right. Which was exactly he, what he was trying to do. He was trying to get the bomb to, the nuclear bomb to go oh. off with next to the weapon, the time machine, inverted, whatever, causing a ripple in past and future causing the end of the universe you got it yeah, yeah. all right all right guys we've been talking too that much sense. give us more of your theories tell us if you are catching on if you had other theories that we didn't catch um it's a movie that's definitely going to be worth watching so let us know your thoughts and what you thought and catch us next time we, we got a bunch of movies coming out we got wonder woman we got 007 we got yes. dune we got uh, Black Widow. Everything is now opening, and we Soul. will be Soul. Yes. There's, I mean, the list goes on. We've got a lot of movies hitting like in the next few weeks. So just keep posted, keep updated. We got more movies for you. Check out our next review in a few weeks. Uh, go to the link before. We also put. We're gonna put. We also just posted the Mulan and New Mutants reviews as well. And we'll catch you guys next time. Click like. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Hit notification. Bye.